close together to in this tournament. And I think as an English nation, that's something we're very, very proud of. England have completed their most successful World Cup finals ever. Victory of winning the third place from Women's World Cup make the Lioness become the most successful football teams in 50 years of England history. However, the issue of sexist abuse towards females in football still hit the headlines in a number of times. Why this kind of thing still happen? And why can't it be stopped? Inevitably, there will always be comments saying, oh, oh uh, that woman should have been in the kitchen or, or women can't play football or, or women's football is rubbish they, they, they should be making a sandwich or, or something totally inappropriate there's always comments from people in the public just unnecessary and, and for me it's they're old-fashioned like they don't know what they're talking about the modern world has, has uh, surely grown past that but it's sad to see it does still happen I think social media is perhaps becoming more apparent because social media is becoming an easier way to target women because you can hide behind a veil of uh, anonymity. But I think there's still a lot of chanting going on in matches, there's still a lot of victimisation on pitches and from the sidelines, so I don't think one's more so than the other. All form of discrimination is unlawful according to the Equality Act, and the FA and other organisations like Women in Football and Kick It Out had provided the instructions for reporting all the antisocial behaviour. But it seems like some of women's or member publics are not concerned to report or take in actions on sexist abuse. At the moment, uh, we don't get that many reports when it comes to sexism or um, even reports within the women's game. We want to make sure that people are aware of the report procedures that are in place. Because if there is any hostility or sexism or any form of discrimination within the women's game and players do not feel um, comfortable, they need to know what procedures there are to actually support them. Uh, on top of that, keep campaigning to make sure that people know what the right attitudes are to have and um, that all forms of discrimination um, are not acceptable, whether this is in the males game directed at women, maybe as spectators or even staff, or um, in the women's game as well. But you've got to bear in mind that the law itself can be quite a daunting um, and quite an expensive course of action for, for people and they may just want an apology. So they may want to feel like that the, the person doing committing the chant or committing the act has had some repentance. That may be enough for them. So you need to assess everything on a case by case basis rather than saying absolutely everyone's going to be locked up for twelve months because because of what they've done. That may be the right course of action. It, it may not be. And I think the law at the moment does have the, the laws of harassment, the laws of discrimination, the laws of equality. So there are courses of action there. It just needs to be aware. The players need to be aware. The, the women need to be aware that they have something they can do about it and they don't have to put up with it just because it's a, a male-dominated industry. Coming a long way to the training grounds of the Coventry United to meet the ladies and staff coaches to learn more on what is really happening in the women's football from their experience. And this is Jay Bradford. As a coach, I've definitely experienced it because I do obviously coaching courses and I'll go on and I'll be the only girl in a group of 20 males and they'll sort of go, you're a female and you play and coach. And they're a bit shocked that, you, that that's happening. But I think, you know, they need to, they need to accept now that it's 2015 and that females can do everything that they can do. Yeah, no, women women have always been able to play. Uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to to coach some of the some of the best young players in the United States. Um, I'm lucky enough to coach, you know, Coventry United ladies now. Um, you know, we play in the Women's Premier League. Um, you know, I don't like hearing when people say, oh, it's a man's game. You know, it's not. It's a game for everybody. Just like every other sport in the world is a game for everybody. You know, and hopefully things start to change in England after England women's did so well in the World Cup. Um, you know, I think we'll start to see a change now in this country. The ideologies of football is a man games has been referred to repeatedly when talking about why women's football wouldn't be able to catch the public interest. And the research of the FA emphasised that for 81% of girls think that football is suitable for boys and they don't feel confident to play it. I think the men's game is quicker and I think if you go to, for a spectator sport you want something that's going to be exciting or it's going to be unexpected. Um, 
and I think like it, it's been history that men's football has got quicker and quicker and quicker and I think women's football has just it's never quite been at the same level it's catching them now and I think it's, it's going to progress a lot quicker um, and the more professional teams that women get in the game again it's going to develop quicker and the reactions will be quicker and it'll become more exciting I mean obviously it started off as a male game but I don't think it should be I don't think the door should be shut, I think females should be able to play, but I don't think the two should be compared. I think the male game is very different, it is quicker, it is more physical, but that's because men are built differently to females, so I think if you're going to compare the two, there are going to be big differences, but if you treat them as two separate sports, I think you know, they are different within their own right. You know, I think technically females are, are very talented, but they're not going to be as strong because females aren't built to be as strong as a male? Uh, I think obviously men are stronger, more physical. Um, I think women are more technical and play play it the right way rather than um, diving around and stuff, really. Building understanding and positive attitudes towards women's footballs are need and mainstream media needs to play the main role on this. There are more than 1.3 million viewers tuned on the televisions to watch the Lioness played in the Women's World Cup. But is that enough for the media coverage? There's still, there's still quite a, a, a lag between how it's reported. So, so the men's game gets lots and lots of coverage and the women's game is still not really reported on so much. The, the BBC and, and Sky and other big organisations are getting behind it a lot more. But uh, sort of your, your newspapers, they're not some are, but not all the newspapers are really getting behind women's sports in general. Some do, but some still don't really treat it as as important. But on the whole, I would say women's sport is is really growing at the moment, and, and things like this summer's World Cup are, can only help with that. I think it just needs a little bit more coverage. So obviously the World Cup has really helped because I think men are looking at the World Cup going, God, England are actually quite good. Um, so I think that's massively helped, but I just think it needs just that little bit of extra coverage. So I think it needs to be on the news. I think it needs to be in the paper and not sort of in the middle of the paper where nobody can see it, you know, back page, just like the males get. Um, you know, local teams should be in their local papers as well. So I think if we've won a game, we should be in the, the paper on a Monday morning saying that we've won or even if we've lost, we should be in there. So I just think it needs just that little bit of extra media coverage. Now the BT Sport has hold the license to broadcast all the games of the FA Women's Super League every matches and I can see the bright futures of the women's game. However, those of things might not mean anything if sexism still reef. So it's time to bring back the question, how sexism can be tackled? People are more tolerant of sexism at football, women and men, and are less likely to report it because they think that there is a level of accessibility about what you can and can't say when it comes to sexism. And maybe the tolerance now um, when it comes to racism and homophobia is less. People will be more likely to report sexism and homophobia than, than sexism. So that does involve a lot of education about what you what is not appropriate to say at a football match when it comes to sexism. And so we can make sure that it's a level par with racism and homophobia as well. And I think it's awareness. Um, I think it's making young women coming into the sport aware that it's not acceptable and it's not tolerated and no one should feel victimised, whether for their race, their colour, their gender, their sex. And we're all treated equally and I think that starts in schools. Um, no child is born born racist, is born discriminating um, and I think just promoting women in the, in the industry by getting more female players into the social media, by getting more female players playing to a higher level and involved in the male game as well, um, you're creating a, a more equal environment where it doesn't become an issue anymore rather than saying this is an issue we need to stop what is the issue? There is no issue and I think the younger generation will be key in that. Here at the Wembley Stadiums, another historical days of the women's football, when the SSE Women's FA Cup final play here at the first time ever. More than 30,000 attendants come a long way to see the North County ladies played against Chelsea ladies. The South Korean with the first Wembley goal in a Women's FA Cup final. And there it is. 
The first Wembley winners of the Women's FA Cup are Chelsea. The victory is not only for the Blues, but it's for all the women, because that's the women's manager. And all those are the successful professional players. It's undoubtedly that the younger generations will be inspired by them, because they have already proved that women can do.